our entrance into Pan. Behold a wise woman who has built her house. She feared the Lord and walked in the right path. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. It is the feast day of Saint Monica, uh, known perhaps best for being the mother of Saint Augustine, and the one who really converted him by the strength of her prayers. But a holy woman with a tremendous story all in her own right. We would all do well to imitate her faith and her practice. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who consoled the sorrowful and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son, Augustine, grant us through the intercession of them both that we may bitterly regret our sins and find the grace of your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. This is the will of God, your holiness, that you refrain from immorality, that each of you know how to acquire a wife for himself in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion, as do the Gentiles who do not know God, not to take advantage of or exploit a brother or a sister in this matter, for the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you before and solemnly affirmed. For God did not call us to impurity, but to holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not a human being, but God, who also gives his Holy Spirit to you. The word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful ones. From the hand of the wicked, he delivers them. The Lord and the Lord rejoice. Light dawns for the just, and gladness for the upright of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. Rejoice in the Lord, you God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. 
The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in to the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Interestingly, despite the emphasis on virgins in the gospel passage, it is not a passage or a teaching about virginity. Uh, I think our first reading from Paul to the Thessalonians was about purity and proper conduct and as we seek a, uh, a spouse. Uh, but you'll notice that in the gospel uh, there were ten virgins and um, they all were pure virgins. They were, it was not all the five that were truly pure got into heaven and the five that weren't were locked out. No, they were all good and obedient virgins. Just some didn't think ahead and didn't bring enough equipment. The lesson of the parable is be prepared, be ready. It's a Boy Scout homily, really. That The, the concluding line from Jesus, stay awake. You know neither the day nor the hour. I think a lot of people have a sense in their mind that uh, if they've drifted from the sacraments, you know, one of these days I'm going to patch all this up. And, you know, they, they see, they remember elderly relatives who would go to church regularly and at the end of their, uh, their time. And they used to think, and they think, well, you know, someday that'll be me when, when I retire and I have more time and I'll, I'll take care of all this and then I'll get back into my faith. And it may be too late. You do not know the day nor the hour. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about the end of the world. I don't know about you. Uh, I'm not obsessed. I'm not on, I'm not on social media looking at conspiracy theories and all that. That's, that's a rabbit hole. You go down and lose your mind. But in these days, you know, I long for it. Um, I hope you do too. I think as Christians we should. Lord, may your kingdom come. That should be one of our prayers. And it could happen before lunch today, and hallelujah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? We'd be standing in the kingdom of glory in all its fullness by lunchtime. You know not the hour nor the day. And yet, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to happen that quickly. When you read what Scripture tells us, uh, there's a tremendous amount of tribulation that needs to come before the end. And you might say, aren't we in it? I don't, I don't think so. When you read what... Jesus predicts uh, happening, uh, things will get a lot worse than this before the end. So I don't think we're there yet. We have not seen the Antichrist arise yet. And, uh, and be very careful with that word. You know, that word gets thrown around a lot. Anytime there's somebody, and usually it's in the arena of politics that they don't like, oh, that person is the Antichrist. Scripture tells us exactly what the Antichrist will be like. He will deny that Jesus Christ is Lord. Not he will be an unfaithful Christian or he won't be the most upstanding uh, person of morality. He will publicly deny Jesus Christ as Lord. That's what the Antichrist will do. That's, that's what it means to be Antichrist. We have not seen him. Most of the people that are labeled with that label have not done that. So uh, society gets these things wrong. We, we deal with these things too loosely. 
I think we just need to be people of prayer, like St. Monica, uh, hoping for the best, praying for it to happen, having faith that our prayers will be heard, and we'll let God take care of the details and the timing. And so let us stand and pray together. For seminarians throughout the world, we pray especially for the men studying for our diocese who resume their studies this week. May the Holy Spirit guide their discernment and sustain them in their formation. We pray to the Lord. As we're praying for seminarians, let us pray that God will continue to call new and holy vocations to the priesthood to serve our diocese and to the religious life as well. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the homebound and those dealing with chronic illness, that they may have the blessing of compassionate caregivers. We pray to the Lord. For this parish and all of its many ministries, may the Holy Spirit help us all to persevere and grow in holiness. We pray to the Lord. For the renewal effort underway in our diocese, for our Bishop Michael Fisher, who is burdened with so many very serious decisions each day, we pray to the Lord. Let us call to mind the personal prayers that we bring to the altar today. For these needs, and most especially for G. Brian Roberts, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Eternal God, accept our prayers and answer them in accordance with your holy will. We ask this with confidence through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate Blessed Saint Monica, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord 
Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example, by communion with them you give us companionship, by their intercession sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy 
will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. I am of God, you take away the sins of the world, the mercy of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. And after spiritual communion, my Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who travels in search of fine pearls and who, on finding one of great price, sold everything and bought it. Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, Almighty God, on the feast day of Blessed Saint Monica, that we may be ever fervent with holy desires and abound in good works, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Amen.